Hi guys, the learning objectives for today, just one, getting straight line access from the pulp chamber down into the first part of the root canal. And what you'll see is you'll be removing these cervical triangles or the little pieces of dentine that are really making sharp curves in the first part of the canal from the pulp, pulp chamber into the root canal and literally removing those curves out of the way so that your files can traverse from the pulp chamber down into the root canal without having to make sharp curves. And that's all we uh, want to do, and we're using the Comet Burst. Thanks for watching. Okay, these are the files we're using today, the Diamond Gold Burr for cutting into the pulp chamber, the Endo Guard for just refining it with a safe ended tip. The endo opener, these are for making straight line access from the pulp chamber down into the first part of the canal. And the endo tracer for refining the um, calcifications. Remember the Comet Patency files have a 12 size between the 10 and the 15, and then the two endo gliders size 15 and 20, 03 tapers. Uh, the tooth that we're working on is the upper molar, upper first molar, uh, has three roots, four canals. Uh, the mesia buccal root has the two canals. So the palatal is the biggest uh, root canal, uh, biggest in dimension that is. Then you have the distobuccal, and then you have the mesia buccal root with two canals in it. There's the pulp horns, and um, there's the MB2 canal, sorry, MB1 canal, and then the MB2 canal coming up. Uh, that side of the root. Notice how thick that MB root is, the mesiobuccal root. It's very, very uh, wide dimensionally. Obviously, it's got two canals, so it has to be. Uh, that's a distobuccal, and that is the palatal. Uh, there's a 3D rendering of the same root. You can see the canals there very clearly. Um, so, coming around distobuccal on the front there, coming around to the mesiobuccal root there on the right. Um, zooming in a little bit, taking a look at the dentinal triangle that the MB2 has to be removed to get into the MB2. Notice a really sharp angle there is getting into that MB2 from the bulk chamber. Here we go. Okay, this is cutting into the uh, pulp chamber, looking for the uh, pulp horns, and just cutting down. So the upper first molars, just remember their excess cavities are very much um, mesial. So most of the distal part of the uh, crown, of, crown of the tooth is kept. Um, so the pulp chamber is cut very much uh, mesially or in the front of the front part of the tooth. And just exploring with the DG16 into the canals, just making sure that we can um, s feel uh, the canals. So always uh, use a sharp DG16, every dentist should have one. And you can see there, mesial distal, the canal uh, pulp chamber is cut very mesially to the front of the tooth as we did Just have to remove a little bit more of that pulp chamber horn and once again mesial distal I notice that most part of the distal tooth is left simply because there's no pulp chamber underneath it and no root, root canals okay just checking with the DG16 again the palatal root fine we've located that uh, now we'll take that around and look for the mesiobuccal one root, or the first mesiobuccal root. Second is sort of just to the right of that. And it's uh, the angle angle into that root, that's a dentinal triangle, that's what has to be removed. And we're going to use the endo openers to do that a little bit later. And so there's the dentinal triangle right there. So to get straight line access into the tooth, which is critical, that's what we're doing here, finding and following. Now if you look at the other dimension, you can see how curved the canal is 
as we start entering from the bulk chamber. So that's the distobuckle root. Uh, um, irrigate, irrigate, irrigate. Just remember, you should the dentist should irrigate as much as they think necessary to wash all the debris out. Uh, and once again, exploring into the mesiobuccal root, there's the dentinal triangle that we have to remove. And again, you can see the dentinal triangle here. That has to be straightened up to get rid of that angle. Okay, so we're just going to explore, before we remove that dentinal triangle, we're going to explore this root canal just to see what angles they are from the pulp chamber into the root canal. So first of all, we're just checking we've got access into the big palatal root. Just notice how much bigger the palatal root is compared to the distobuccal and compared to the mesobuccal root. Also notice right down the tip of the palatal root how it gets quite thin. <coughs> this is pretty normal. Um, most palatal roots do have that uh, tendency to um, become thinner when you get closer to the apex. For every hand file, always pre-bend them. Come what may, they'll follow the canals far better. Okay, so just entering down that mesiobuccal canal. Uh, the file I'm using here is a 15, I should be using a smaller file. If I carry on pushing too hard without a curved file, I'm going to ledge right there at that point. So we're using a watch winding motion rather than up and down. It's a um, twist twist to 30-30 degrees. And we're lucky to get down there with a 15, which I'm using here. I should have started with a 6 and an 8, then gone to a 10, then a 15. Uh, just trying to access that terminal part of the root. Now that we've got there, we're going to use a, a filing motion, which is an up and down motion. But to, first of all, follow the canal, very much a small watch winding motion is used. Uh, now irrigate, irrigate, irrigate. And as somebody once said to me, you're not going to see the endodontic police coming around for over-irrigating. So you can tell the dentist that. Um, there's no such thing as over-irrigating unless you squirt it through the apex, obviously. Notice the pre-bent file there. We're just going to explore that mesobuccal root or mesobuccal one canal with the uh, pre-bent file. I think this is still the size 15. And just to get down to length, we're watch winding. 30 degrees, 30 degrees, 30 degrees, 30 degrees. And down we go. Working down to length. And we get to length. Or close to it. This is where you, where you put the apex locator on. And um, my apex locate as my finger, I can feel the tip of it, and so we're at length. Notice the uh, curve, that curve would be distally, um, and I'm just taking a look at the file location in the canal, maybe about one millimeter short, and once again the apex locator would show that. So if you put an apex locator on here, you'll see that it is not quite at length. You can see how that root canal does exit towards the furcation. Furcation is the middle part of the root where the two can sort of the, um, where the between the two roots, between the mesiobuccal root and the distobuccal root. And once again, I'm just taking that uh, size 15 file. The dentist should always start with a smaller file and that, maybe a 6 or an 8. Always pre-bend the file and always use the watch winding motion to follow the canal. So the following of the canal is always watch winding and then the shaping of the canal is a filing motion. When I talk about filing motion, it's up and down rather than 30, 30 degrees like that. And down the canal we go, down, down, down. Once again, apex locator on and looking for the working length. Okay, that 
it's reasonably um, reasonably paid. And so that's the filing motion in and out, in and out, in and out. Normally you do this for a little bit longer, maybe 20 seconds, and then we'd need to prevent that file again. Good, prevent again, and let's just take that down into the palatal root. Palatal root's a big one, so we're going to have no problems working down that. Just watch how the watch winding motion in the, in the curve of the file just follows down. Okay, just opening up a little bit. This is now with the um, endo guard, which is the safe tip. And because we're getting right down to the pulp chamber floor, what we don't want to do is take a diamond tip right down into the pulp chamber floor and start to cut into the pulp chamber floor. Okay, the Comet Endo Opener. We're just going to start to straighten up those um, dentinal triangles. Okay, first of all, finding the alignment of the root, how it's aligned. Notice the gap between the roots is called the percation area, and we're brushing away from the percation area. So brush, brush, brush. Okay, so first of all, find the alignment. So notice how I'm aligning the angle as it exits from the pulp chamber floor into the root. And then we start, and I'm brushing away from the furcation. Brushing away from the furcation, just trying to straighten that angle up into the MB2 and remove what we call the dentinal triangle. So that would be the view that the radiograph, when they take a, a, a periapical radiograph, that's what you'd see. Okay, irrigate, 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 and once again, and once again, uh, removing those dentinal chips. You can see those there at the top uh, coronal portion of the canal. Now just use a small OA to a size 10, this is a 10, to recapitulate. Okay, recapitulate is just making sure that you can take the small file down, it stirs up the debris and make sure that uh, the canal's not blocked. It's quite easy to uh, block out the canals. Irrigate all of that debris out. <clears throat> now you should be seeing the uh, line angle into that root canal is a little straighter. And you can see there that indeed it is. We're starting to get quite nice straight access. Still, Maybe we could do a little bit more in that dimension. You can still see that reasonably sharp curve there, but it's not too bad. Okay, and this is a distabuckle root. We need to straighten those angles up so we have straight line access into the distabuckle. First of all, find the angle. Find the angle that the canal is in the pulp chamber floor. So that's what we're trying to do here, and just lining it up before we start and then removing that endo opener out a little bit and then activate the foot pedal. Out, activate the foot pedal and away we go. When we've got that line angle correct. Okay, so we're just trying to remove that dentinal triangle there. In and out, in and out. And we're brushing once again away from the middle of the tooth or away from the vocation. Dentists can use gate skittens here, but they do have to be careful with them, just as I'm being careful with the um, endo opener. So this endo opener is basically doing what three gate skittens would have done, the gates one, two, and three. And I'm just trying to straighten up that line angle into the root. You can see how long this takes. This is critical to know that the time that it takes is, is significant. And actually this is far longer than it takes to do the rotary files. This finding and following part of the canal preparation can take 30, 40 minutes, depending on the, the uh, complex nature of the roots. Okay, the patency file again. Just making sure that we've got all the debris 
in solution so we can wash it out and making sure that we're passing that file down to the apex. So we've straightened that line angle up far better than it was previously and we're doing a nice job of getting that angle uh, into those canals. Now we haven't even explored or located the MB2 yet by the way, this is, we've only done the three canals so far. And this is pretty normal, just make sure you get a nice clean access cavity and you've located your palatal root, you've located your distobuccal root, and you've located your MB1 root, which is that on the top, and now the distobuccal on the bottom, we're in with the explorer there. So once we've found, located, and even started cleaning as I have, uh, these roots, there's the palatal root, notice how big it is, even the endo-explorer can penetrate deep into that, uh, that root. Uh, now it's time just to straighten up that uh, distobuckle a little bit more. <coughs> Taking the endo opener down, again looking at the line angle before we start. That needs to straighten up that area a little bit more and that's what we're doing. So brushing away from the fication again. And just straightening up that angle so that the files, when we start using them, uh, flow straight into the canals. So straight line axis, straight line axis, straight line axis. Irrigate, patency file. Patency files recapitulate are the same thing. Okay, just working down to the apex, making sure we're not blocking out with the dentinal debris because you can easily push, especially in the little, little fine canals, that dentinal debris can force down into the root canals and just block it out. Looking good, right? Okay, so just working down that uh, MB1 canal or the MB1 root. Canal. Very nice. Down we go, just checking it's nice and patent. Yeah, you can and you can already see how we're starting to develop that nice straight line access into those root canals. How big do we make the access? Well, that's a little bit a matter of controversy. You know, the more dentine that you remove, the weaker the tooth. But if you don't have straight line access, you could break the files when you start using them, the rotary files, that is. So just the patency file, working down the MB1 route again. And we're going to start exploring for the MB2 shortly, which is just above that MB1 route. Taking it down. At this stage, you might like to recheck your uh, working length. Okay, so make sure you get that size 15 hand file to length before you start using the glide path files. Remember the hand files are O2 tapers. And remember the comet path files are O3 tapers. Once again, irrigate using sodium hypochlorite or bleach. Okay, just rinsing out all of that dentin or debris. And now that's a size uh, 15 hand file. Just using that as a patency file. Really classically, a patency file should be an O6 or an O8. So I should be using an 06 or an 08 here in this portion of the canal to do a patency filing. And once again, patency filing is just to make sure you haven't blocked out. And the 06 and the 08, often they'll pass it through the apex, so actually through out of the tooth into the periapical area around the tip of the root. Okay, we're just going to do a little technique where we take from the 15, we're just going to take size 20 hand file and gently work it down into the mid root portion. Now, here you have to be really careful because the size 20 file is relatively stiff, so we're not pushing it. We just take it passively to mid root level, and then we turn two turns counterclockwise and pull it out. We're going to do the same with the 25. Take the 25, no forcing, just place it till it binds, 
two turns backwards and then pull it out. And what this does is it just loosens up a little bit of that mid root section so that when we take our glide path paths they're not going to bind quite as much and then take a size 15 down to length again. This is the MB1 route. Once again notice how long this is taking just to find follow and get this nice glide path so that when we start to use the rotary files they're doing much less than they would have done because the work is really being done now. Look at that curvature, it's uh, quite a pronounced curvature. That curvature you don't really uh, see how it's working in the other dimension. So, and okay. So what we're doing is now locating the MB2 root canal that you can just see there. Um, and I'm gonna. There's the MB1 with the um, probe, the DG16 probe. And then we're going to locate the MB2, which is just above it. So there's the MB2. Look at the angle that it exits the pulp chamber. It's very sharp. This is always a problem for dentists because even if they find it, that angle can create a huge problem because we have to remove that dentinal triangle. So watch as we work, we're going to first of all find, so we're using the DG16 to probe and push and push and push till we find a little sticking. So I'm looking for the sticking here. And then I find it just starts to enter the canal and you find this sort of sticky feeling where, where it will, will enter the canal a little bit and that is the location of the MB2 root. Okay, and it takes a lot of time because now I'm just opening a little bit more. Uh, I should be really look at, uh, looking at using the endotraces here which are much finer tipped than this uh, burr that I'm using, which is the endoguard. Um, so this is the endo, this should be the endotracer, and I can just brush away the dentine that is really uh, hiding the access to that MB2. So MB2 canals are generally hidden by a little dentinal ledge over the top of it, and the um, Endotracers are very nice for just removing that. So I'm just trying to explore this with a small hand file. I think this is a size 10. Just get a little bit of binding into that size 10, uh, into the MB2 canal. So once again, noticing how long it takes to do the finding and the following, and I still haven't found all the canals. So feel free to fast forward this bit of the MB2 if you want. Um, but before you do that, just notice this really sharp bend and the curvature that the file has to get around. If I force that file now, obviously I'm going to just create a big ledge right there in the red circle. So what you need to do once again is come back and remove that dentinal triangle that's preventing that file from having straight, light ac straight line access into it. Um, this is a classic area where people just ledge the MB2 root two to three millimeters into the canal because they always have that very sharp curvature and you can ledge just in that area. So now what I want to do is uh, take the endo opener just two to three millimeters into that root canal and just start to straighten it up. Once again you can use gates one, two and three or gates two, three and then one. Okay, so just two to three millimeters just to that first curvature. If I was to take this endo opener through and to pass that curvature I would ledge again. So I don't want to be doing that. Okay, just opening that area up and as I work brushing back, sorry I'm almost off screen there, just brushing back away again from the vacation. Brush, brush, brush. 
Okay, and I have to open it up a little bit so you can just start to see how I'm opening up and straightening that triangle. There. Actually, I'm removing the little ledge. Um, right. Irrigate, irrigate, irrigate. Clinically, I should be irrigating even more than this. And now recapitulating this small file. Okay, taking a small hand file down just to remove the debris. And you can see how the axis is starting to shape up and straighten up. If you don't remove that little dent in a ledge, the chamber, pulp chamber floor of the MB2, you're never A, going to get down it, and if you do get down it, your ledge, as we showed you before. Okay, taking that little hand file. Now, that was the first curvature. What you're going to see in this root canal is still quite a sharp curvature. And so I have to pre-bend the file and use it in a watch-winding motion. I could even pre-bend it a little bit more than that. Okay, so... You can still see some relatively sharp curvatures in that first part of the canal. And probably I should straighten that up a little bit more even. Okay, so I'm going to pre-bend that file. And then watch how the pre-bent file just works around those sharp curves. So I'm watch winding, just teasing it. Some people call dancing it. So just watch winding 30 degrees, 30 degrees, 30 degrees left, 30 degrees right, 30 degrees left, 30 degrees right, and with that curvature. And see how easy it would be for me to ledge there. Okay, so I do need a smaller file. That's a size 15. I think I was using my 10. Which for that, yeah. So here's a 6 or an 8. So we're going to just start with a 6. And these are the patency files. So we're going to use a Comet patency file. Pre-bend. Just start working this down that MB2 root. Because the size 10 and the 15 were far too big for these tiny little curves. Down we go, very good. Working around that first sharp curvature. And down we go. Watch winding, watch winding, watch winding. And working that down. This has to be done with patience. Patience is the key in any of these very, very sharp, curvy root canals, and it just takes time and time and time. Okay, and once again, pre-bend the file. Obviously, the pre-bent file, too, is a little bit tricky sometimes to enter the canals before you can start. So it's a little bit tricky here, you can see, just trying to maneuver that little tip of that prevent file into that MB2 root. And here we go. No, it's still not in the root. This happens quite often in the clinic. It's a little bit tricky to just get that file into that canal. Once again, notice how long the time is taking a, to find the canals, and B, to follow them. Crazy thing is, if you push hard, your ledge. If you ledge, it takes far, far longer to bypass that ledge. And it's very, very easy to uh, ledge in these curvy canals. Sorry, that's some maintenance going on in the office behind that wall. Not quite sure. It sounds pretty destructive. Okay, we're getting close to um, getting down the canal. This is size 8. Once again, watch winding, watch winding, watch winding. 
Moving down that root a little bit more. Patience is the key. Just tiny bits at a time. Removing tiny bits of dentine, little by little. And you can see that we're getting down that MB2 root. You can see why dentists don't like performing these kind of things in this canal, because it's very time consuming. 